Howdy, everybody. Welcome back. This is video number two of the push rods or the aileron actuation, as they call it. Um, and I did the in the previous video, I did the actual preparing the push rods and getting them ready um, with the threaded ends and all that stuff. And this is more the actuation part of it. Um, and the first thing you have to do um, is put in this, it's a really long bushing. Well, you put in nut plates, obviously, is what I'm doing right now. Um, but then you'll put in this like brass bushing that will allow that actuation to actually, you know, be really smooth. And believe it or not, it is really, really smooth. Um, shockingly so. Um, so I was kind of impressed. It was kind of cool. And as you can see, I did kind of um, drill out the the hole because those are powder coated and like I said in the last video um, the powder coated stuff kind of gets inside and then it's not the, the correct diameter and I will do basically the same thing with the brass bushings as I did with the um, threaded ends I'll put them in the drill gun and I'll get some sandpaper just to kind of clean them up so there's no burrs or anything on them um, and I will use a drill to drill out the powder coated part of the actuation thing so they fit in there real nice and smooth so that is that particular part right there so while I have you I will tell you some jokes I got two jokes and they are both horribly bad jokes but we will see if my wife who is sitting next to me actually laughs I am not so sure she will so the first joke is um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I once got fired from a canned juice company. Uh, apparently, I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. I oh, love it. Uh, did you know that I'm reading a book about anti-gravity? Yeah, it's impossible to put down. <laughs> My wife is just shaking her head. Yeah, those are pretty bad, I guess. Uh, okay. So, <clears throat> seeing those brass bushings there, they kind of slide in the, the... That's the actual bolt that slides inside the brass bushing, which slides inside the actuation part. And then I did not get very good pictures of me putting that in there. Um, and I did realize after the fact... I was squeezing my hands in there to get that in there. Um, but those back, the bottom skins for the airplane, they're not attached right now. I could have easily taken them, taken them off and then did all of that stuff um, without squeezing my big old hands in that little tiny hole. So just be aware, if you haven't put the skins on, you can do this particular step without those skins on. And it's much, much easier. Um, and now this is the, uh, I don't even remember what it's called. Um, it's the part, it goes kind of on the, where the spar is um, sticking out on the end of the wing. Um, it's the torque tube, that's what they call it. So working on the torque tube, again, same thing applies here. They're powder coated. Um, so you need to make sure you kind of get all the gunk out of them and then you put the ends on the threaded ends just like you've done to four other things for the push rods here um, and then attach the threaded ends and then there's a big steel bar that kind of goes in between the two ends and it's kind of how they hook together that steel bar um, I made the mistake of priming it and the primer kind of got in the way because the tolerances between the tubes and the steel bar are very, very tight. Um, so the primer actually started getting, like when I tried to put it in there, it would scrape off the primer and that's the steel bar right there. So it was not fun. Okay. So what is this thing called? The, torque tube collar um, I have my line marked on it you probably barely can see that I can barely see it um, 
but we're putting them in the torque tubes here. So that's what we're doing. And basically what you do is you put it in there to a certain measurement. You drill the holes. There's four holes, you know, every 90 degrees basically around the circle. Um, and then it, you, I think those actually get uh, bolts that get put through there. They're not riveted on. Um, and then you only do one side because here I'll show you in a little bit. You have to actually have them at the correct angle. And so I'll show you that. Okay, I'm working on the, what is this called? The torque tube collar and the torque tube assembly length. Um, and I did buy, and I think it was Austin Mackey that used this, but I'll put a link anyway. Um, but you can get on Amazon these little spacer kits. Let me get it situated here, hold on. These little spacer kits, right? And so they have these nice little spacers and you could, you know, add them up. So like, you know, this is a quarter, it goes right there. Five sixteenths goes right there, does it? Or does it go, yeah, it goes right there. Um, and then you could put, mix and match them together to get a distance. And so I have a one eighth, a three eighths, and a half which gives me an inch, and it said it's supposed to be an inch and 1 64th. Well, my little kit doesn't come with a 1 64th. It only comes with a 1 16th. 1 64th is basically a sheet of paper folded over. Um, so that's what I did, is I took a little sheet of paper, I don't know if you can see it, um, and just kind of stuck it in between there. So 1 inch and 1 64th. So that's what I got. Okay, just some math for you. Um, 164th is 0 0.016, basically, of an inch. Um, it's a lot of numbers. It's 0 0.015625, but 0 0.016 works. Um, and a sheet of paper, um, if you fold it over once, it's about half that. Um, so if you fold it over twice, it actually gives you a 64th of an inch. So just... If you need to measure a 64th, it is a sheet of paper. If you fold it once and then fold it again on itself, so there's four layers of it, you have a 64th of an inch. Just FYI, that's out there now. Um, and then basically, you saw me do one, and then this is the other one, which is just the mirror image of it. So I just flipped it over on my little, you see my little taped off area there. I used that to measure, so I made a, an exact like box that it should fit in it should be the, that distance um, from end to end and then i put the little spacers underneath of it so it was raised up the amount it was supposed to be raised up and then you know drilled the holes in the that metal bar that's kind of in between them it's how they hook together um, and then putting them in the wings was i was like how in the world am i supposed to do this so just FYI, um, you have to be able to slide the two pieces closer together. And this is where the priming didn't work. So I didn't have, I had the bar primed kind of in that in-between piece that wasn't in each of the ends. Um, but you have to be able to push them closer together and then expand them out as you're putting it in the... Um, the little roller things that are in the end of the wing. In order to do that, you can't have primer on the whole piece of that metal bar that's in between there um, because you have to be able to slide it in further than what it's going to be at. And you can see me kind of messing with that. It's like, how in the world do I get that in there? Well, you can't get it in there. You have to actually push it together and then kind of spread it out once it gets in there and then put the bolts in and, and attach it all. Um, and also remember the um, washers. There's two washers, one that goes on the top, one that goes on the bottom um, as you're putting them in. Because if you forget that, you will be undoing the bolts that hold it together a third time. Um, speaking from experience, by the way, just 
so you know <laughs> I, I put those together um, I did actually buy the locking nuts that you use on that um, I bought new ones for that particular one because I had done it so many times but I learned my lesson and there you go and that's kind of what it looks like it just kind of moves back and forth and it will actually connect to the push rod that's you could kind of see the little gold piece in the wing that's the push rod for um, the ailerons there and then you put the little bolts in you see me putting the bolt in um, after it's all kind of in the holes where it's supposed to be so that's the last step and then once those are all connected, then you can actually connect the push rod to the actuator there. As always, um, I hope you like this video. Subscribe, tell your friends about it. Talk to you guys later. Have fun. Bye.